Ernest Rutherford was the son of James Rutherford and Martha Thompson. He was born on the 30th of August, 1871, in Brightwater, New Zealand. During the investigation of radioactivity, he coined the terms alpha ray and beta ray in 1899 to describe the two distinct types of radiation emitted by thorium and uranium. These rays were differentiated on the basis of penetrating power. From 1900 to 1903, he was joined at McGill by the young Frederick Soddy. Together they collaborated on research into the transmutation of elements. Rutherford had demonstrated that radioactivity was the spontaneous disintegration of atoms. He noticed that a sample of radioactive material invariably took the same amount of time for half the sample to decay, its half-life, and created a practical application using this a constant ray of decay as a clock, which could then be used to determine the age of the Earth, which turned out to be much older than most of the scientists at the time had believed. Joseph John, or J.J. Thompson, was a British physicist born in 1856 in Cheatham Hill, Manchester, England. Several scientists, such as William Prout and Norman Lockyer, had suggested that atoms were built up from a more fundamental unit, but they envisaged this unit to be the size of the smallest atom, hydrogen. Thomson, in 1897, was the first to suggest that the fundamental unit was over a thousand times smaller than an atom, suggesting the subatomic particles now known as electrons. Thomson discovered this through his explorations on the properties of cathode rays. Thomson made his suggestion on the 30th of April, 1897, following his discovery that Leonard rays could travel much further through air than expected for an atomic-sized particle. Isotopes are variants of atoms of a particular chemical element which have differing numbers of neutrons. Atoms of a particular element, by definition, must contain the same number of protons, but may have a distinct number of neutrons which differs from atom to atom without changing the designation of the atom as a particular element. The number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, known as the mass number, is not the same for any two isotopes of any element. For example, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14 are three isotopes of the element carbon with mass numbers 12, 13, and 14. The atomic number of carbon is 6. Every carbon atom has 6 protons. Therefore, the neutron numbers in these isotopes are 6, 7, and 8. In this portion of the video, I will give you the five main points of Dalton's atomic theory. Number one, elements are made of extremely small particles called atoms. Number two, atoms of a given element are identical in size, mass, and other properties. Atoms of different elements differ in size, mass, and other properties. Number three, atoms cannot be subdivided, created, or destroyed. Number four, atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. Number five, in chemical reactions, atoms are combined, separated, or rearranged. Cathode rays, also called an electron beam or E-beam, are streams of electrons observed in vacuum tubes. If an evacuated glass tube is equipped with two electrodes and a voltage is applied, the glass opposite of the negative electrode is observed to glow due to electrons emitted from and traveling perpendicular to the cathode, which is the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the voltage supply. They were first observed in 1869 by German physicist Johann Hittorf and were named in 1876 by Eugen Goldstein, who named it Kathodenstrahlen in German, or in English, cathode rays. James Chadwick was a British physicist born on the 20th of October, 1891 in Ballington, Cheshire, England. He was credited with the discovery of the neutron. Chadwick studied at the University of Manchester and the University of Cambridge. He was the primary British scientist who collaborated in the Manhattan Project during World War II. He was knighted in 1945 for his achievements in the field. In July 1895, Marie and Pierre Curie married. And thereafter, the two physicists hardly ever left their laboratory. They shared two hobbies, long bicycle trips and journeys abroad, which brought them even closer. Maria had found a new love, a partner, and a scientific collaborator upon whom she could depend. Marie decided to look into uranium rays as a possible field of research for a thesis. She used a clever technique to investigate samples. Fifteen years earlier, her husband and his brother had invented the electrometer, a sensitive device for measuring electrical charge. Using the Curie electrometer, she discovered that uranium rays caused the air around a sample to conduct electricity. Using this technique, her first result was finding the activity of the uranium compounds depended only on the quantity of uranium present. She had shown that the radiation was not the outcome of some interaction of molecules, but must come from the atom itself. In scientific terms, this was the most important single piece of work that she conducted. Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen 
was born on the 27th of March, 1845, and died on the 10th of February, 1923. He was a German physicist who, on the 8th of November, 1895, produced and detected electromagnetic radiation in a wavelength range today known as X-rays or Röntgen rays, an achievement that earned him the first Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901. This diagram clearly shows the three different types of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma. It shows that alpha rays won't travel through very much, beta rays are stronger and will travel through more than alpha rays, and gamma rays, being the strongest, will travel through the most amount of material. The long-term effects of radiation may not be to kill your body cells, but to alter their DNA code in a way that leaves them alive, but with an error in their DNA blueprint. The effect of this mutation will depend on the nature of the error and when it is read. Since this is a random process, such effects are now called stochastic. Two important stochastic effects of radiation are cancer, which results from mutations in non-germ cells, termed somatic cells, and heritable changes, which include mutations in germ cells, eggs and sperm. General relativity is a theory of gravitation developed by Einstein in the years 1907 to 1915. The development of general relativity began with the equivalence principle, under which the states of accelerated motion and being at rest in a gravitational field, for example when standing on the surface of the earth, are physically identical. The upshot of this is that free fall is inertial motion. An object in free fall is falling because that is how objects move is when there is no force being exerted on them, instead of this being due to the force of gravity, as is the case in classical mechanics. This is incompatible with classical mechanics and special relativity because in those theories, inertially moving objects cannot accelerate with respect to each other, but objects in free fall do so. To resolve this difficulty, Einstein first proposed that spacetime is curved. In 1915, he devised the Einstein field equations, which relate the curvature of spacetime with the mass, energy, and momentum within it. The Chernobyl disaster was a nuclear accident that occurred on the 26th of April, 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine, which was under the direct jurisdiction of the central authorities in Moscow. An explosion and fire released large quantities of radioactive contamination into the atmosphere, which spread over much of western USSR and Europe. It is considered the worst nuclear power plant accident in history, and is one of only two classified as a level 7 event on the international nuclear event scale. The battle to contain the contamination and avert a greater catastrophe ultimately involved over 500,000 workers and a cost an estimated 18 billion rubles, crippling the Soviet economy. Perhaps no other aspect of World War II is as controversial as the decision to drop the atomic bomb on Japan. One thing that should be made clear is the international and open nature of scientific inquiry on atomic physics right up to the start of World War II. This is because no one was trying to make an atomic bomb, even though many scientists were aware of the tremendous energy trapped inside the atomic nucleus. Work was underway in numerous countries to better understand the atom and perhaps find ways to harness its energy. In this desperate new war, governments became aware of the potential source of immense power. Germany, Japan, Britain with America all had active programs during World War II to develop atomic weapons. As the theoretical underpinnings of atomic energy came into focus, so did the staggering complexity of the industrial effort required to make an atomic bomb. This is where Germany and Japan were left behind as the United States spent two billion to design, test, and manufacture the atomic bomb under the Manhattan Project. The CANDU, short for Canada Deuterium Uranium Reactor, is a Canadian-invented, pressurized heavy water reactor. The acronym refers to its deuterium oxide, heavy water, moderator, and use of originally natural uranium fuel. Kandu reactors were first developed in the late 1950s and 1960s by a partnership between Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, the Hydroelectric Power Commission of Ontario, the Canadian General Electric, and other companies. All power reactors built in Canada are of the Kandu type. The reactor is also marketed abroad and there are Kandu type units operating in India, Pakistan, Argentina, South Korea, Romania, and China. In October 2011, the Canadian federal government licensed the Kandu design to Kandu Energy. Radioactive wastes are wastes that contain radioactive material. Radioactive wastes are usually byproducts of nuclear power generation and other applications of nuclear fission or nuclear technology, such as research and medicine. 
Radioactive waste is hazardous to most forms of life and the environment, and is regulated by the government agencies in order to protect human health and government. The main reason radioactive energy isn't fully implemented into everyday life is because of the problem of dealing with the waste. All information in this video was taken from Wikipedia 